Mr. Laurent, are you on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. My video though, has been stopped, so I can start the video. Great. Yeah, I, Thank you. I watch your video now. Thank you so much. And you are audible also. Can you share your screen of the presentation, yes. please? Yes, I will do so. Thank you. Okay, I got the screen also. You can proceed now. All right, uh, very if, good. If you don't mind, yes, that is okay now. Thank you so All much. Right. Please take care. All right. All right. Well, greetings to everyone. It's a, a real pleasure, a privilege to be with this uh, this group and to follow up on this really very, very professional presentation. Um, so greetings from California. I am a PhD student on the public health program, uh, completing the dissertation process in April. Uh, and the general theme of the work will be trust and risk perception. Uh, with regards to vaccine hesitation in the COVID-19, post-COVID-19 post era. And so this particular part of the research is a focus on trust and distrust and trusted sources as a critical issue, uh, both during the COVID-19 era and then in the aftermath, which we're entering now of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And I wanted to look at the role of clergy, especially of a group of clergy, which is Eastern Orthodox Christian clergy uh, in the USA, in the Western USA. Um, and um, the, here's the background uh, for this, this research. In the USA, before the pandemic broke out in 2017, 19, even 20, uh, but mostly um, 19, 18, there were some, uh, some exercises, some reflections, some seminars and so forth on what would happen in the case of a new pandemic. One of the most interesting documents was called the SPARS uh, document. It was a, a document dealing with uh, how to prepare for a pandemic. And if you look at this document and search the PDF, which is, which is public, you can see how much trust is mentioned in this document, there was a real sense by those who prepared it, uh, Johns Hopkins in the USA, that trust, trust in public sources, distrust, confidence, those would be a major issue. So I wanted to explore how this actually played out uh, in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic situation. And then I noticed something that in this particular major document on how to prepare for pandemic response, uh, was not mentioned that particular groups would be identified as, in fact, being trusted, right? So there was a sense that there would be lack of trust in institutions known as official institutions, government, news, so forth. Uh, but there was not a real sense that religious figures, the clergy, would, in fact, still enjoy high trust even in what is in fact a public health, not a religious uh, situation. So I wanted to, to really look at how clergy have responded and how they perceive uh, this to be, to be at play based on experience. And I was able to look at a particular, and I think maybe little known group of, uh, of Christian clergy, uh, historically, uh, historically, uh, there's three Christian groups uh, in the world. There's Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, also known as Greek Orthodox, and then Protestants. So I wanted to look at, at the Orthodox Christian clergy and add access to a particular group. And so I wanted to ask questions on, on their, their role, their position in this COVID-19 pandemic. And more generally, the role of clergy in public health discussions and decisions. So the problem that I, that I saw is that even though the trust in clergy was not identified in these uh, documents about preparing, responding to a pandemic, this was still identified as a trusted group. But the issue is we did not have a lot of information about how various clergy groups were dealing with this role of trust uh, during this, uh, this pandemic situation. So for the method, uh, I was able to obtain a permission from uh, the, the Archbishop to 
send a, a questionnaire, so Google Forms, uh, to the, the clergy group. Uh, and actually this slide needs to be a bit updated, but uh, that's okay. Um, and the idea was to use a, um, a Likert scale questionnaire uh, with a few Boolean yes, no questions and a few open questions. Now these open questions could be also recoded um, and which I'll discuss to make them more exploitable in terms of uh, analysis. We actually uh, received, so there was a, a, a list of 70, uh, 70 possible clergy respondents in this diocese of the West of the Orthodox Church in America. So that's a diocese which goes from Colorado to Hawaii, so very large. Um, and with a CI um, of uh, 95%, we had a plus minus 4%, so a, a, a reasonably usable margin of error or confidence interval, especially in view of some of these sharp, of these sharp uh, results. So one way to analyze uh, questionnaires that use the Likert scale, which is I think little known and little covered in, in our studies, is that we look at the median and then we look at the interquartile range or IQR, which is a measure of dispersion when you have a Likert scale. So it's a very interesting way to analyze this kind of data. And our goal was to look at, uh, at responses and patterns that would be statistically significant based on the previously mentioned confidence interval. What was interesting is that uh, the results came, uh, came very quickly. There was a real interest in the clergy to, to, to give their, their input, both on the liquid questions and also the open questions. Um, and the respondents confirmed their experience and their perception that indeed clergy were perceived to be a trusted uh, source in the context of the COVID-19 era. For example, the respondents confirmed, uh, and that was uh, about 65%, confirmed that parish members had approached them for specific guidance on making a COVID-19 vaccine decision. Now that echoes what had been identified uh, around uh, March, May of 2020 by the US government, that in fact, maybe to their surprise, people had high trust in clergy and they had enrolled visible figures such as Franklin Graham, um, as well as local pastors to be part of this information uh, campaign and to overcome um, distrust in other official sources. Also, interestingly, uh, for the, the, the bigger picture is that the respondents confirmed that in their experience and perception as Orthodox clergy, that public health issues, so not just COVID-19, but also STDs and decisions, for example, uh, with uh, birth control, abortion, uh, uh, end of life care, that those had become an integral part of what it meant to be active in the clergy. And at the same time, these uh, respondents noted significantly uh, their lack of initial seminary training. In other words, they had to, as they confirm in the study, they had to do their own research, update their own training, because their initial seminary training was not adequate to really engage not just pastoral issues, but also what turned out to be public health issues. The respondents also confirmed uh, their perception, their experience of a, of a politicization uh, of public health issues. In other words, people being on the right wing or the left wing of the political spectrum, thus having actually an influence on their perception of not just political, but public health issues. And perhaps as a result of this, to be further analyzed, when asked who were their trusted sources, the, the, the respondents, the clergy actually disagreed uh, on interesting points. They disagreed 
on whether religious figures should in fact be public voices in public health issues such as vaccine hesitancy. Uh, there were uh, several figures who had been uh, vocal. I mentioned Franklin Graham, but also Pope Francis and the Orthodox Patriarch Bartholomew. And there was a split uh, among these respondents regarding uh, the, the, the role, the posture uh, that they, they felt should be taken by clergy on these matters. So that was an interesting um, split in what otherwise would be a, a highly homogeneous and, and consistent group with the same belief system. And this was confirmed by here point number five, that though they belong to a, a homogeneous group, so Eastern Orthodox clergy in the same diocese, that when they were asked to enter uh, what were their trusted sources, and there was an open field, there were very different replies. Some trusted in public figures like Anthony Fauci or the CDC, other trusted in a particular uh, acquaintance or colleague or friend with medical knowledge, and other relied on what I would call alternative sources. Um, so I was able to recode these open answers to see if there was a correlation between the type of source, conservative, ecclesiastical, or alternative, and where these, these clergy came from as far as their training, their, 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 their seminaries, because there was a perception that perhaps there was a, a, a relationship, a correlation between where they came from as far as the schooling and then their choice of a trusted source. But in fact, the correlation did not result um, in a, a proven correlation between the seminary of attendance and what kind of sources they would, they would trust. So this, this particular uh, research uh, was able to look at an interesting group that is not very much studied, uh, to have access to this group uh, through authorization and permission from the, uh, the authorities and to obtain statistically um, significant uh, results uh, that can be part of a bigger study, which is my uh, dissertation on the issue of trust, so loss of trust, and also uh, risk perception for the COVID-19, post-COVID-19 era when it comes to um, vaccine hesitancy uh, in particular, and trying to look at, at, a, at a multidisciplinary approach in which the role of clergy and faith is uh, looked at as part of this uh, quantitative and qualitative study. So thank you for your attention. I hear uh, mention uh, references and just a few, a few uh, conclusions that I can uh, re reaffirm that when it comes to the issue of vaccine decision, hesitancy, or even refusal, the issue of trust, distrust is confirmed as a critical issue. There's an, an, an emerging realization of the role of clergy in public health, which has discussed uh, early marriage. That would be another area where maybe clergy, imams, pastors could have a role. Also, the need for um, better education in public health as part of clergy training, and also here additional need for comparison forthcoming among different kinds of clergy, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, in different regions. And therefore there's practical, actionable policy recommendations on clergy education, training, and engagement with clergy uh, by public health authorities. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lord. It's a nice presentation. And I request all the participants to raise the question in the chat box so that Mr. Lord can answer all. And also, I open the poll here for a uh, polling session. Please, uh, participants and the next presenters, please vote for him also. So there is an one question, Mr. Lauren. Um, any link on COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy amongst the clergy and by extension to their Christians? So the, the study uh, suggests strongly uh, that there's different positions among clergy regarding the issue of the vaccine. And because 
what we've seen is that one, the the parishioners trust the clergy as being impartial, having their best interest. That's number one. And number two, uh, because we've seen in the this the survey that uh, the majority of the clergy have had direct questions from their parishioners on decisions. Then the study suggests that yes, there is a a link to be fully determined and I think further uh, uh, examined between the position of a a, a public religious figure, so a a, a clergyman, a minister, priest, and so forth, and then what will be the, 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 the attitude of the people. And I would add that I think it's not limited to uh, discussions that we personal between the clergy and the people, maybe, uh, you know, after the services, often there's a gathering, people ask questions, but I think this would show in the, the general attitude, communication, messaging throughout the year, throughout the years before, that establish in general uh, a relationship of confidence between clergy and, and the people, and how much the people rely on the clergy to make such decisions. And it seems that the the this this study really does suggest a link between the two. Uh, Ms. One of the participants wants to ask questions. Jean Clark. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, Jean Clark. Yes. Uh, if you want to ask any question to Mr. Lawrence, please. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence, for the good presentation and the, the new innovation, the trust. That was uh, very much appreciated because it is a new um, research and that trust is really needed in our common society. But I'm um, curious to have figures. Is it possible to share with us such presentation, such presentation, and have some figures? Yes, of course. Of yes, absolutely. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you some uh, some specific figures um, that I think would be interesting, and also the way that they are analyzed uh, in terms of the how do you statistically interpret uh, these answers? Uh, for example, for example, on the question, uh, do you agree? So they're all agreement, Likert scale questions. Do you agree that trust in the bishop, in the priest has been a critical issue during the course of this pandemic? Uh, what we had is that 80% plus expressing strong agreement. We had a median of four, which puts it very high on the liquid scale, and an IQR, which is the interquartile range of one. So not much dispersion, and the, the median at four is a strong agreement level. So that's a very significant uh, sense that trust has become a critical issue. So that's one example of, um, of a uh, particular result from, uh, from the study. Um, I don't know if there's there's enough time, uh, but I, we could look at uh, at other questions. One of the interesting questions I want to mention is, uh, in terms of results, is that if asked about the issue of risk perception, the clergy agreed that the people stayed away from services because they perceived a risk to contract or acquire COVID nineteen by coming physically to church, and so we had here a very high seventy percent. Uh, uh, a level of agreement on this being the uh, the issue of risk perception, but what's interesting is that uh, is a theological impact is that the the majority of the clergy that is eighty plus percent with a, a median of two IQ of one so small dispersion uh, concurred that the. Uh, people did not fear getting sick from COVID from receiving communion. It was a common cup in the Orthodox Church, but feared getting COVID-19 from, say, being in the temple or, say, kissing a cross or icons. So you can really see in the study how theology also has a profound correlation to risk perception, and that was very interesting. Okay. And, and, yeah, and those numbers are in the, the paper attached to the presentation, of course.
Mr. Lawrence, you have some more questions in the chat box. Is this mistrust not uh, related to the conspiracy theorist that has tried to overwhelm people's religious belief? So that's a great question. Um, in in the overall research for the the, the, the thesis, uh, the the approach is that it has taken a number of factors coming together, sociological, economical, the type of media structure, you know, some of some of the previous issues with public trust in uh, in media, pharmaceutical. All these have collided to create at least a group with a very high level of distrust with authorities. And um, for, for a small group of, of people, this has coalesced uh, at times into what I call this conspiracy theory approach. But this is the result of a previously evolving lack of trust, which uh, has been uh, studied by many sociologists as part of the so-called fourth turning where generations go through a phase of high trust and then low trust based on a number of factors. So yes, it is a, an aspect, but it is a result of, of many other factors that have led to this uh, reduction in public trust. Uh, Mr. Lord, you have another question. The data was based on the 2019 NDHS, which is the last and most current national representative data available. That's by Mr. Abraham. Uh, I'm not sure what he's referring to here. Uh, I, I, I don't see a link between uh, the question and my, and my presentation. So that might be just something that I... I'm not sure what he means by that. So um, it could be a question for the previous uh, presenter. Okay, no problem. Yeah. And uh, so much, Mr. Laurent, for your Thank you. presentation. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you can unshare your screen and make yourself a participant. Thank you.